Hello, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of Newgrange 10, which is a um, Neolithic farmer from Ireland, European Neolithic farmer from Ireland with um, mitochondrial DNA U5 and paternal lineage U2A, which is nowadays most common in the Balkans. This is what he looked like with my Nashakoto. He's predicted to have brown color eyes. Uh, interesting that he's predicted to have brown and not dark brown color eyes. Kind of uh, interesting dynamic here. Most of the non-Europeans like East Asians or Africans tend to score dark brown eyes. But he's predicted to have brown eyes, Greek shaped nose and black hair. Uh, with snipper free and with YSEC, he's also predicted to have brown eyes, black hair and white skin. However, uh, YSEC, you can see depicted him with sunglasses because YSEC is not able to uh, impute genotypes. He most likely had BH1 based on one of his genotypes in OK2 region and he most likely did not have BH2 based on another genotype also in the OK2 region and uh, did not have BH3 or BH4, which we know from his actual genotype. He was genotyped for BH3 and BH4, and he did not have derived variants in either of the two uh, haplotypes. So he definitely had quite dark color eyes. Uh, he's got some genotypes for whiter Eurasian skin tone, uh, near SLC45A2 gene and KTLG and SLC24A5 gene, and in ASIP, however, he also had some genotypes for darker skin tone, and he had a lot of light coloring variants in IRF4, but nothing in the main variation for ginger hair and blue eyes that was found um, mostly in European hunter-gatherers. I actually colored this variation in green so that it would be a little bit easier for you guys to follow what I'm talking about here. Moving on to GED match calculators, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13 on GED match. Um, as you can see, very European result, mostly West Mediterranean and North Atlantic, which are both sort of uh, really Western European components to score. Uh, interesting that he scores even a little bit of Baltic, 0.5% Baltic admixture. So maybe he has a little bit of Eastern Hunter Gatherer or some kind of Northeast European like admixture, but he's closest to Sardinians with the Oracle and he's actually a little bit more Northern than Sardinians are. And you'll see this pattern repeating in the other calculators as well. This is what he scores with MZOP K11. Uh, this calculator is pretty good for various ancient European genomes and in fact, uh, this calculator's oracle only features ancient groups, so you're not going to see like Sardinian or Basque here. Uh, with the oracle here, he is closest to Irish, late Neolithic and various European farmers, which is precisely what he is. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic plus Swedish hunter-gatherer at a distance of 1.05, which is the closest distance out of all of these groups. So um, very much a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic farmer plus European hunter gatherer. This is what he scores with Pond DNA LK10 here. ENF is a much more southern component than An Anatolian Neolithic farmers. It's more akin to the Natufian component in Gedrosia uh, Ancient Eurasia K6. So it's an extremely southern component, and he's scoring half of this extremely southern component plus half European hunter gatherer. Uh, this individual is pretty pure in terms of ancestry. There is no, he's not scoring any Sub Saharan African or East Asian. Uh, this is what he scores with Pond DNA LK12. Once again, you can see mostly Anatolian hunter, Anatolian Neolithic farmer, excuse me, plus around one third European hunter gatherer admixture, no Caucasus admixture, uh, a little bit of, he's scoring a little bit of Near East, which is kind of interesting. Uh, with the Oracle, he is closest to various European farmers. And in fact, uh, for the mixed mode Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Iberian Chalcolithic plus various European, um, Northern Europeans and European hunter-gatherers such as Labrana or Matala, Matala 12 or Bichon or Hungarian hunter-gatherer or even Karelian hunter-gatherer line number 7. This is what he scores with uh, Ancient Eurasia K6, once again a calculator by Gedrosia DNA. And as you can see, he's mostly scoring West European hunter-gatherer plus Natufian. And you have to keep in mind that Anatolian Neolithic farmers would be scoring also a mixture of West European hunter-gatherer plus Natufian, maybe a little bit less West European hunter-gatherer, a little bit more Natufian. But um, also VHG category here does not really represent Western hunter-gatherers, it represents more like modern Northern European genetic drift, but you can see this individual is very Western, that's what I'm trying to get across here, and this individual is three quarters Anatolian Neolithic farmer plus one quarter European hunter-gatherer if I had to estimate his admixture. With Gidrosia K3 this individual is 100% West Eurasian, so um, if there is any kind of, if there if there is a uh, need to classify him racially, you would say this is a white individual in terms of race. 
Now we'll be taking a look at his traits with my genome analyzer tool or something I also call my trait predictor tool. We're going to choose the file. We're going to choose our new Grange 10 file. This is our individual and we're going to analyze the genome. Okay, so he's got GG here. <coughs> in Comte's Valmet variation, which means Val Val genotype or Warrior genotype, higher activity of the Comte enzyme, therefore quicker breakdown of dopamine and less dopamine in the system. Uh, advantages in stress resiliency, but disadvantages in attention tasks come together with this genotype. <coughs> okay, my throat is a little bit sore from talking all day. I made three videos today. This is the third video, so my my throat is kind of suffering. Uh, CC here in DRD2, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to a slightly higher number of D2 dopamine receptors and better memory performance, typical genotype here. Uh, TT here, typical genotype, higher odds of bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Oh, this is an atypical genotype. So this is an this is an atypical genotype in DRD1 that leads to higher odds of bipolar and schizophrenia. Uh, AA here, which leads to a higher likelihood of autism. TT here, which is a typical genotype, leads to slightly higher odds of autism and tobacco addiction. And GG here, which leads to a slightly higher risk of schizophrenia and nicotine dependence. So based on his genotype in DRD1, you could say that he has a slightly higher predisposition towards uh, various mental health conditions. Now, what about this? What about 5-HTTLPR? He's got TT here, which means... Uh, short form 5-HTTLPR, this is the typical genotype for most humans. Most humans have a predisposition towards being depressed uh, just based on this genotype in 5-HTTLPR. Some of us, uh, especially Europeans, have um, the protective allele. Some of us Europeans have long form 5-HTTLPR, which sort of protects us from depression. For example, me, I have long form 5-HTTLPR, but it's pretty rare. I don't see it all that often. Uh, for What about lactose persistence? Does not carry does not carry, does not have any of the European lactose persistence mutations. Uh, what about empathy? None of it is genotypes. What about diabetes? Two variants for higher odds of type 2 diabetes, but that doesn't really matter all that much. Type 2 diabetes is preventable, unlike type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is this variation, and he's not genotyped here. What about Alzheimer's? TT here, which leads to an average slightly increased risk of Alzheimer's. Well, doesn't matter all that much. The most important variations here are these two, and he's not genotyped for them. Oh, what about miscellaneous? Let's let's move on to the miscellaneous section. Okay, so CC here, which means no micro. You can read on the screen what it says. I'm not going to pronounce it here on YouTube because I might have monetization problems when I pronounce these kinds of words. Um, CC here, which means better performing muscles, likely sprinter. And no fat gene variants in FTOs, RS 99, 39, 609. What about drug response? TT here, which means more likely to, weight, get, to gain weight if taking Alanzapine. And CC here, which means significantly more likely to gain weight if taking Zyprexa. Once again, uh, if this individual was taking Zyprexa, he'd probably gain quite a lot of weight. Well, which, which is typical for humans, really. <coughs> Most humans would gain a lot of weight by taking this drug. Uh, what about albinism? TT here, which means not a carrier. CC here, which once again means not a carrier, not albino. Uh, CC here, which leads to a decreased risk of cleft lip and palate. And not a carrier of Melanesian blonde hair variants. Uh, that's right, on my Megagenic site, on my genome analyzer, you will find even the Melanesian blonde hair variants. So if you are really curious to find out whether or not you have these, you can use my little tool and, you know, it's free, you don't have to pay for it, just go on my site and use my tool. Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. That's pretty much all there is to this new Grange 10 individual. Thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download his genome in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Uh, links are in the description of every video I make to download the files. And that's, that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.